Amen. Good morning. I was reminded when Walt was praying how have you prepared for worship today? And uh, I asked myself that question. And I prepared, and obviously the choir prepared. They just did a beautiful piece of music. Um, but really, how, how much effort, how much do, time do we invest in making preparation for worship? Do we spend more time getting dressed and eating and doing the physical things? Or do we spend as much time or maybe more time in prayer? You know, I want you to know that, that, that the altar is always open. If you want to come and you want to spend some time just uh, either sitting on the front pew or coming to the altar and kneeling like I like to do sometimes, uh, you're welcome. I want you to know that you have that freedom um, because it's important that we prepare. We prepare for, for pretty much everything else in our lives. And, and I'm not saying we don't prepare for worship. But oftentimes, we just don't invest enough in preparing our hearts. Uh, and we come together today for a very, very holy, holy event. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, beginning in verse 12, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. What a beautiful powerful passage of scripture you know what you know paul could have could have shortened that passage of scripture uh oh here i am am i editing the bible no no actually paul was unpacking what jesus had already said but paul could have shortened that passage and paul could have made it one verse he could have said simply therefore as the elect of god Behave like the elect of God. Because that's what he was saying. John, Jesus said in John 13, in verse 35, By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. That's what Paul said in Colossians 3. 12 through 17. The Lord's Supper is primarily a community event exclusively for Christians, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus used the ordinance to focus his, his disciples upon the mission field, upon the world. Jesus said, and we'll, we'll read this this morning, during the Presentation of the elements. Jesus said, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Well, here's the question of the ages. Here's the seminary question. Who are the many? Is that just us? 
When Jesus said that 2,000 years ago, sitting around a room with his disciples, he was thinking about us. Everyone, anyone who would ever place their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? I believe John 3, 16. I believe that verse. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Lord's Supper is truly a remarkable experience. It accomplishes many things at once. It takes us back to the origin of our salvation. It overwhelms us with the love of Christ and it points us to the many who, like us, stand in need of forgiveness of sin. So in, the, in a nutshell, the Lord's Supper reflects the holiness, the majesty of God. Listen, Jesus Christ is holy. He fulfilled the law to perfection. Yet through the horror of the cross, He served us. And He loves us to heaven. Praise God. Christ loves us to heaven. He said in Mark 10, in verse 45, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give His life a ransom, and there's that word again, for many. Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? If you are, you're among the many. That's the question theolo theologians debate. Who are the many? The whosoever. That's the answer. So every time we participate in the ordinance of the Lord's Supper, we're reminded of what? Of love. And we're taught how to. And God gave us passages like Colossians 3, 12 through 17 to teach us how to. Scriptures like 1 Corinthians chapter 13 to teach us how to. How to love. So today we remember that the blood of the Lord Jesus was shed for the remission of our sin and even the sin of the entire world. For everyone who will ever be born. God's grace is enough. And it's pictured. It's laid out before us in the Lord's Supper. You know, as the elements come by, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, as the elements come by this morning, take a moment. Just hold that wafer just for a moment. Hold that bread in your hand just for a moment and consider what it represents. When the cup comes by, just hold that cup just for, just for a few seconds. And consider what it represents. When God's Holy Spirit will flood you with the warmth of His grace, because it represents love. Unconditional, no matter what, love Jesus paid it all. He said it is finished. And that's enough. Let's pray. Father, prepare our hearts now before we come to your table. Lord, speak to us. For we need you We stand in need of grace, 
your love, your forgiveness. Father, we've been made perfect through your Son. But through the course of our lives, we evaluate ourselves and we see many imperfections. God, bring those to the forefront of our mind that we might confess them and seek your forgiveness. And Lord, you've promised that you'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's what we need. And that's what we need today. So God, meet us now at the point of our need and bless us with your presence and pour out upon us your Holy Spirit and convict us of our, in our hearts that we might see Christ lifted up in all of his glory Father, those that are followers of the Lord Jesus, we might just rest in His work on the cross. Father, we love You. And we lay our lives before You. And we pray this in all in the glorious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're here today and you've never placed your faith in Jesus, you know, listen, it's not about, I had this conversation last week. It's not about being a member of a church. It's not about a relationship with a church. It's about a relationship with a person. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he's the only way we can know God. There are no other way. Come to Christ. Apart from a personal faith relationship with Jesus Christ, listen, it is impossible to know God. And don't let anyone else ever tell you anything different. Apart from a personal relationship, faith relationship with Jesus Christ, it is impossible to know God because we can't possibly fulfill the law. And Christ has, and he did. And if you've never accepted the free gift of God's Son for the forgiveness of your sin and receive the life that he offers, this invitation is for you. It's your invitation. God's speaking to you. Don't put them off. Or maybe you're a Christian and maybe you know you're born again. You're heaven bound. But there are things in your life that aren't right and you know it. Just confess that. Just confess it. Just tell it to the Lord before you come to the Lord's table. We're about to partake in the ordinance of the Lord's Supper, and the Bible warns us very clearly in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 not to come with unconfessed sin upon our hearts. That's why we have an invitation at Northgate before we come to the Lord's table. Now, you can do business with God right where you're sitting, Or maybe you need to come to the altar and bow and pray. Or maybe you need to pray with the pastor. I'll be happy to pray with you. Whatever it is and whatever it takes, we need to be honest with God. We need to prepare our hearts for worship, for this very holy event of receiving the Lord's Supper. So you come as the Lord calls Dennis. Dennis, there he is. I'm looking for you. There he is. Dennis, is, he's going to come, lead us in a hymn of invitation. You stand and let the Lord lead. I hear the
The Bible teaches us that on the evening before our Lord and Savior was crucified for your sins and my sins and for the sins of the world that he shared a meal with his disciples. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 26 in verse 26 and as they were eating Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples. Let's pray. Our Father, we come before you giving thanks for your Son, our Savior, the Lord the Lord God Almighty. And Father, we're thankful that when we couldn't help ourselves, you came to redeem us. You've rescued us. Help us through your Spirit to know that and to know what that means. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. For through Him and His power and His grace, we worship. Holy Spirit, glorify yourself and glorify the Son, our Savior. We pray in Christ's name, amen.